Welcome to Screen Therapy. I'm your host, Jason Schurz. In October of 2018, I found myself in the hospital, sitting across from a psychiatrist who was telling me I had bipolar. I was sent home with a bunch of medication and laid on the couch for a week. I had my iTunes library on shuffle, trying to shake the hornet's nest from my head. Ever since I was a kid, I've been using loud music as a form of therapy. Punk rock and mental health have always been connected. This podcast looks at that connection through the lens of different guests. This is Screen Therapy. It's human nature to want to avoid emotions like sadness and anger. With depression, it's almost impossible not to run away from it. Josh Scoggin of 68 has a different approach. When he rides the valleys of depression, he embraces deep emotions to be creative when his low mood passes, and it always does. Josh compares his moods to a pendulum swing. He knows the valleys will soon become peaks, and he finds the therapy that's always worked. Writing songs, playing live shows, even creating noise in the privacy of his home. Josh's ultimate goal is to keep creating and try to always be free in the moment. Hello, this is Josh Scoggin with 68. I'm the guitarist and singer of the band. With me and mental health, there's really deep valleys and there's honestly really high peaks. I know that I have a very healthy outlet for being this band and stuff. And so for me, when I feel deeper in the valleys, it's... It's not all consuming because I can literally in my brain, like there's a switch that flips, like I'll start feeling it, feeling it, feeling it. And there's a switch that flips. It's like, oh, this is going to make for a great song. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, I I, I don't even want to say trick myself because it's real, but I almost sort of, I go, okay, cool. Like this isn't going to last forever. This is temporary. Maybe it's something legit maybe it's too much sugar i've eaten whatever and maybe it's not enough sleep whatever the thing is that sort of has brought me to these few days or whatever the the case may be and i can never really usually work at that moment but i know i almost embrace it as much as i can because i know that there's a future song coming out of it there's a future uh there's an outlet I think a lot of artists obviously struggle with depression, but also I think a lot of them have, uh, not all of them, but a lot of them have the ability to go, oh, well, there's a silver lining on this dark cloud, which is whatever is going to be created from it. For folks who wouldn't necessarily claim that they're artists, I, I believe everyone is an artist, but for folks who don't necessarily have that outlet or whatever, it feels like that's a very dangerous thing to not have some sort of outlet, some sort of thing to be able to to exit. A lot of folks that do studies around bipolar uh, behavior talk about how the low depression and bipolar actually does inspire the creative material. And of course, when they go into the more the manic stage or the high stage, that's when they have the energy to create things. So yeah. it makes sense. And I also remember talking to Buzz Artsborn from the Melvins, and he was talking about how the people he's known through the years get them behind a drum kit or a guitar and they can play their hearts out, but they're quite troubled as people in their private lives. So 
when things are going well, and, and maybe this is a, just a dumb statement that's obvious, but when things are going well, because I have this outlet, this, you know, being able to like literally scream on stage every single night. So let's pretend I'm in a good spot and we're on this thing and I'm able to just really express every single night. I find that it either doesn't come around or it softens the blow or it's just not necessarily as frequent. But I feel like there's those times where I'm not exercising those outlets, you know, because it doesn't have to be a tour. It, it can be just being creative at home with stuff that no one's ever going to see. That too seems to work for me and at least gives me something to turn a bad situation into a good situation. I think several things in our lives we have no control over, but I also believe with all my heart, there's plenty of things we do have control over. And I don't think a ton of people, I don't think take full advantage of those things. I really try to, if I'm not on tour, I try to make sure I don't surround myself with things that are going to push me into that valley, AKA isolating myself, AKA not staying stagnant. You know, I, I try to be a little active. I don't really have like a workout plan per se, but I do try to stay active and, and move around and hang with friends when I can, you know, just things of that nature. They, those are the types of things e eating, right? There's so many little bitty things that in and of themselves may or may not seem to so much, but I know for me, myself, they add up and I can feel when I don't have a bunch of those things going right for me. Once it's there, once it's happening, I see it as like a pendulum swing. And so for me, that's always seemed to feel like what it is. And the further into depression, the further that pendulum swings in the moment, you know, I mean, it feels like this is my world now. This is the reality forever and ever. Amen. This is it. And it feels like that. And even while it's feeling like that, I can at least go, it isn't forever. This is a temporary thing. It's going to swing back. Because of me allowing it to go where it is, the pendulum must scientifically, it's going to go back. <laughs> it's science. <laughs> which is the thing that's going to make me more creative. Whereas the times where I've really tried to like halt it, you know, it's going into the depression world. So I stop it. I go, no, 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 no. I, 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 I you know, I, I almost fake it. I'm like, go do this, do this, like, like whatever. Those sort of things I find tend to make it just boom. It, and then it sort of takes a minute to get that momentum back up. Earlier in life, maybe when you first started playing in bands, were you fighting that, those feelings more than you are now? And what happened when you did? Yeah, those times where I've definitely fought it. Let me talk about like sadness for a minute, not necessarily depression. I think those are two separate things. Sadness is almost like there's a time in my life where it's like, oh, you shouldn't be sad. That's not good. You, you should only ever be happy, you know? And, yeah. and so there's times where just that mentality that false mentality, I'll say that mentality would make me be like, oh, I'm, I'm feeling so down. That's wrong. I got to get out of this. I got to figure it out. I got to, you know, and, and it now, you know what I mean? Like within the next few minutes, I got to figure out how to not be this. Tell me something that I don't know. What can I say? I got it all figured out in my head. I'm finna die. I can't complain. What if I get worse or it's better again? I said, oh. Tell me something that I don't know. And so there was times where I definitely would sort of fight it in that sense. But I remember like back in the day, just kind of not having a full grasp on it. Not to say that I have one now necessarily, but back in the day, like, again, as a younger fellow, there's times where it's like, it, this feels eternal. Like this feels like this is what is my reality. I will never not feel in the valley being able to look back in hindsight and kind of see the history of my personal life, I'm able to go, okay, it's just not forever. I mean, it literally, like, there's been, like, weeks where it's like, okay, like, I got to get out of this. Something I, uh, I talk to people a lot about is never underestimate the power of baby steps. For me, sometimes when it's, like, at the lowest of the low, trying to write an album is insane. Like that's just not even remotely in the cards, but turning on my amp and playing the guitar for a minute, you know what I mean? Like these little baby steps. Of, yeah. I might not write a song today. I probably won't write a song. And if I do, it's probably not going to be the best of the stuff, you know, but these baby steps, these little things that I can tackle of like, Hey, just show up, just show up to work, which is 
sometimes for me, just turn the guitar amp on and just play someone else's songs. Something as small as that or as small as something, a, a tiny, tiny victory of like, you feel like you just want to eat sugary dopamine blasts is the thing that's going to, so that small victory of going, no, I'm going to eat this other thing or whatever, a salad or whatever. Like those are tiny little things that you can at least go, okay, I can wrap my head around that thing. You know, I can't write an album today for sure, but I can pick up my guitar and play it. Or, you know, someone else might draw something or, or write a note or anything like that, you know? Yeah. I find that when my depression is bad, my addictive behaviors are also very challenging. Like you mentioned the sugar, oh, yeah. like as soon as I start to feel low, you know, I go back to the sugar addict uh, in me, uh, yeah. other addictions I fought through in my life. And as soon as I get low, it's like those things start to pop up, like little like demons on my shoulders saying, like, oh, sure. remember me, remember me. And it's all the comforts, all the, everything that feels like it might be a, a comfort. Food is a big one for me. I, I mean, it's so easy for me to just be like, I don't care. I'm going to eat just the worst stuff in it. That's just such a thing for me to resort to, among other things. And again, I'm going to be honest, there are times in my life where I'm in this valley and I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to give myself today if I can. That's the thing. So like a lot of times I have to like sort of clarify with myself, like, okay, sometimes I do have a record to write. Sometimes I, I go into the studio next week. And so it's like, I got to work. So those are the times where I'm like, okay, show up to work, just start playing guitar. And then at least when you go to bed that night, you can go, Hey. I did the most I could do that moment. But there's other times where I'm like off of a tour and I've got nothing to do. And so, and I'm feeling down or whatever. And I'm like, I'm just going to give myself today. You know what I mean? But I'm not going to give myself tomorrow. You know, like, so today I'm going to sit around and watch Netflix and eat some stuff that's probably not the best. But I do that knowing that tomorrow, put your fanny on your feet and let's go do something, do uh, something, whether it's a, whether it's, you know, take a walk around the block just something, these baby steps. You know, I, I think there's a big power in baby steps. You spend a lot of time on the road and you have for many, many, many years. And that idea of coming back and feeling low, and I know that's really common for folks that tour a lot. Yeah. And the adrenaline of playing the shows and the people in the crowd and all the chaos that you would see at a punk show, the volume. What's that like coming back? And I mean, I've only done small tours myself, like just a few days here and there, but you have to come back and, and get back into that mode of, stationary moving stationary moving that back yeah. and forth all the time it can be tricky when you're out on tour every single day is every variable different you know like it's it's all input 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 whether you're in the states and you're like in wyoming or you're we literally just got off tour in europe and it's like one day we're in paris and we're we had a friend with us that had never been over there so we're Eiffel Tower, Arc de Triomphe, <laughs> the Louvre, like running as fast as we can, trying to see all these things, input, 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 you know, like dopamine, dopamine, you know, just like these natural life highs, you know. So that's day one in Paris. Day two, we're in Germany. We're going to see the Berlin Wall. We're going to see, you know, like, so boom, 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 boom. And then not to mention people say nice things. People are saying really positive things or singing along at shows, all these sort of positive, just hitting you. And then, yeah, you come home and it's like, oh man, I got to be still with myself. You know, I got to be able to be alone with my thoughts or, you know, the deck needs to be fixed. You know what I mean? Like just these, <laughs> these things that are just boring. <laughs> yeah. Like you're just like, oh, it would be a lie if you pretended like the post tour depression thing wasn't tangible and big i mean it's a big thing but i try to give being at home the exact same energy and fervor that i do on tour so like for example i mean i, I don't have to fix the deck but you know cool put it on the to-do list you know it's to-do list boom, boom boom and like when i'm on tour it's basically these like to-do lists drive to the show load in you know uh figure out food yeah. to do list and stuff and it may be some fun things and some whatever and i do the same thing when i'm at home I, I try my best to just go like one's not better than another it's just a different thing but i love being on tour i love being in a different city every night those are really fun things for me it's not for everyone i think everyone thinks it's for everyone but it's not for <laughs> everyone but for me i love it but when i'm at home i can go hey there's so many 
great things about being at home. There's so many things like, Hey, I don't have to figure out where to park today. You know, I don't have to figure out where to park a van and trailer. And sometimes that can be like a hair pulling thing, you know, where you're in New York city or something. It's like, I try to just find the, the things that are great and positive from being at home instead of looking at a negative of like, Oh my gosh, I'm stationary. You know, I'm just sitting still like I am in one spot for the next month, you know, or whatever. Instead of even thinking about that being like, yo, I ain't got to figure out where to park for the next month. <laughs> you know, like I don't have to like load in equipment for the next month. I don't have to just any of those things, but also taking this stuff, you know, finishing the deck, building the deck, whatever. It's like, yo, just make that to-do list, you know, first things first, got to go to Home Depot, you know what I mean? Or whatever. Like I got to figure out that I got to measure this, I got to whatever. And, and you just start treating it kind of the same way you treat it as uh, out on tour. But yeah, it's, it's definitely a different beast to say the least. You are very um, interesting to watch on stage. This isn't <laughs> being creepy or anything, but like you've got a really great stage presence. Uh, I don't think you're faking it. I never thought you were faking it even back in the Norma Jean and Chariot days. You know, it's yeah. very authentic. It's very real, but it's also kind of scary and, and exciting. Where do you go when you're performing? Do you channel something or do you just go off into a zone? A lot of folks talk about dissociating on stage. W where are you? I am doing my best to live in that moment for better or worse my goal is to just be as free as possible and so when i was a kid like the only thing i ever wanted to do is be in a band i wanted to play shows so every single show i play i feel this is me succeeding at that thing i wanted to do we've been fortunate enough to play some really nice shows some really big shows and stuff like that but that's not the thing that I was talking about. The thing I was talking about is playing a show. If there's 12 people, if there's an arena, like it's just, I'm playing tonight. So I try my best to, and sometimes I'm better than other times, but I try my best to just soak it in and just be like, this is the last show I'll ever play. Like, this is it. This is the, you know, and, and if it is the last show, I need to be grateful because I've been able to do a bunch of shows, but I'm on stage. Like I'm just literally trying my best to like, soak it in just feel it and just be present in that moment you know some people kind of almost black out they're yeah. like i don't even really remember the show in there <laughs> yeah and i've definitely done it from time to time you know you're so busy or, or parking didn't go well or you, you're doing a ton of new songs and you're just like okay don't screw up the new song you know but for the most part if i am in my right mind and everything like i just try my best to like just be like, this is the thing I wanted to do. And I'm so grateful to be doing this thing. And it's not lost on me how blessed I am to be doing it and still to be doing it. You know, it, it's so rad. It's trying to be just like free in the moment. And like, you know, it's funny because, you know, nowadays everybody's filming everything the entire time, every single moment. And so you see stuff, you're just like, whoa, that's dumb. Like, you know, I can't <laughs> believe I did that or some whatever jump kick thing, whatever weird thing. Yeah. That's why I never film anything at shows because I don't, I want to be in that moment and remember it. Yeah, I remember same, it. If same. I forget, then I forget I'd see the band again. Yeah, yeah. I want to soak it all in, even when I'm watching another band play, you know what I mean? So when I saw 68 play live, I just had a huge smile on my face the whole time. And nice. I was getting so much out of it myself. So for you, how much of it is thinking about what you're projecting out to other people as well as being in the moment for yourself? I don't think much about that, if I'm being honest, because I've never written music that's like for the masses or anything. So I, I fully get it if someone's like, this isn't my thing or whatever. You said some really nice things earlier about it feels authentic on stage, feels real. And, and thank you for that. It's very kind. But that's where my headspace goes. Like, hey, let me do me. And I think that'll trickle outward. We have a very smart audience. We have a really intelligent audience. And I think people are there to, they know when something's fake, when you're just kind of phoning it in or you're just, and here's the moment that I jump. And so I try, you know, <laughs> and so it's like creating art for me. I know some people create art as a product. They would take their song, they put it in a focus group. This is all like hypothetical, you know, they put it in a focus group and then the focus group goes, oh, uh, I like that. Oh, I don't like that. That's a little too much for me. And they go back and they soften it up. They, they round the corners, whatever. I don't know. That's all hypothetical. But for me, I do the thing that I feel that's going to move me. And that way, I am not having to phone anything in. I care tremendously about my lyrics and what they say. If other people understand them or not, I don't really, 
I don't know what people are going to like. I don't know what they're not going to like. I don't know what the trends are. I don't really care. But as long as I know what those lyrics mean, as long as I know the work and the effort that went into this, then I, 20 years from now or five years from now or next day when I'm playing that song, it's sharp to me and it yeah. moves me. And then I don't have to phone anything in or whatever because I'm hearing what I'm saying and it moves me. It, it's a, it's a sharp object to myself. And so I never, ever try to round those corners because there's people that be like, well, you know, more people like your music. If you do that, and it's like, that's fine. I, I have no idea what people are going to like, what they're not going to like. So live shows, same thing. I just do what I need to do. I want it to be real for me. I want it to be. And then if we have a bad show, it's like, Hey, I had a great show. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> if there's 12 people there and they all hated it, it's like, dude, this was the therapy I needed today and it worked and it rules and it's, and I'm grateful to be here and everything I did, I did. A lot of times when I played a show and thought to myself afterwards, well, first of all, what did I just do? Because I can't really remember it. Cause I blacked yeah. out or, Oh my God, are they going to hate me now? He's like, oh, yeah, yeah. People, like still my friends. And right. then people are always stoked because, of course, like you said, you're being genuine. You're creating art, whether that art scares them or not. I mean, the best yeah. art does sometimes scare people. Exactly. Speaking of which, uh, one of the best screams in punk, hardcore, metal of all time, I think, with you and you're just high-pitched, raspy, and I can hear it in your voice because you said you just got back from tour. <laughs> what happens in your body when you're screaming? Yeah, I have no idea. I've never been trained or anything like that, so I just sort of have always done it. And uh, so I don't know what's technically even happening and i sure don't know like i know mentally and sort of spiritually it feel i mean it's sometimes literally a release you know because there's some people that sing heavy music and it's heavy and they're screaming and it's anger you know it's hate and it's anger could be defined as like negative attributes you know uh for me it's always been about passion <laughs> I'm not a very angry person. I have nothing really to be angry about. Both my parents loved me and supported me as best they could. And, you know, I have no reason to be singing out of hate and anger. So for me, it's like this passionate thing. And so when it becomes a passionate thing, you just feel like your whole body is just sort of like pushing to this one goal. And this one goal is how, not even how can I uh, express the, the passion, but there's only one way to express the passion. That's how I kind of always justified screaming over singing. This is how passionate I am about this thing. It's got to be a scream, whatever, you know. And so, yeah, your whole body just sort of like dives into that experience. It's all rowing in the same direction of that one goal of like, I feel passionate about this thing that's being said or, or just even passionate about the gratefulness of being at another show. Well, and the passion about being healthy mentally and physically. Yeah. That's a huge want to think of a lot of folks for sure i'm definitely not money driven i want to wake up and enjoy what i'm doing driven you know what i mean and so <laughs> like uh so i've never had a lot of money or anything like that and you know and i've had opportunities come my way and the people closest to me that find out i turn something down or do whatever they're just like and for me it's like i think if i was focused on the money then some of the heart of what I'm doing would go away. And that's not to say everybody that makes money is doing that, but just the opportunities that I've had come my way, it's like, I'm not really passionate about that thing. I know for me, the more money I had, the more money I spent, first of all, but I <laughs> was never happy with True. it. Same thing. I just wanted to do what I wanted to do within yeah. reason. We all have to paint the deck or whatever it says. Yeah. You have to put one foot in front of the other. So you have to maybe work a job you don't like that might be something you literally have to do so do that thing but i would imagine have a hobby that you just are so ecstatic about you know what i mean like i play music and, and i'm very thankful that currently it is my source of income it's the thing that pays my bills thankfully it always has been but if it ever was not the thing paying the bills like it would totally be my hobby it would be my all-consuming it is my hobby it's just it happens to be able to pay my bills right now and, and that rules, but that train surely won't last forever. It will bump me off at some point, but I'm not going to not be playing music. You know what I mean? Because it's like, I just genuinely love it. the 
That was my conversation with Josh Scoggin of 68, the band 68.com. For more episodes of Screen Therapy, go to ScreenTherapyHQ.com or wherever you listen to podcasts. Big news, the Screen Therapy book is available now. Screen Therapy, a punk journey through mental health, tells my story and the stories of others who use punk as a catalyst for mental health. Like this podcast, it links the community-minded punk scene with the mental wellness of the punks who belong to it. To order the book, go to ScreenTherapyHQ.com. For merch, check out the newly opened store at ScreenTherapyHQ.com store. And for even more designs, check out Scream Therapy on TeePublic. Okay, enough promoting. It's time for some thanking. Thank you for listening to Screen Therapy. Doing this podcast and talking to folks about punk rock and mental health has been a crucial part of my own mental stability, and it means so much to me that you're out there listening. Screen Therapy is created in the Cathet region of coastal British Columbia, Canada, on the traditional territory of the Klahaman Nation. Contact me at ScreenTherapyHQ.com or email me at ScreenTherapyPodcast at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. Let's talk about punk rock and mental health. Until next time, take care and be well. If you